Let's talk about a couple drawbacks of Ivis. What, what are some artifacts? I know we've kind of discussed a little bit, but any artifacts that you would call attention to for people to look out for? Sure. You know, the, the big thing is, uh, you know, obviously being able to distinguish and seeing, you know, is there a dissection that's present? And, you know, going through the entire uh, progression of what is more severe than uh, you know, what's severe and needs to be treated with, a, say, scaffolding or additional balloon angioplasty or, or what can be left behind. Um, that can be one of the, the trickiest things uh, in knowing what, what dissections are important. Now, interestingly enough, uh, to understand that we realize based on, uh, I think, the coronary data, you know, things like peristent dissections are an important uh, you know, aspect of recurrence. Uh, and there, mm-hmm. there are companies out there uh, that have already and are continuing to innovate uh, and try and address this, this very problem. Uh, I think that's one of the, the biggest things, uh, you know, in understanding, you know, what should be treated and what shouldn't. Uh, you know, we talked about calcium before, and certainly that's, uh, you know, that can be, uh, you know, difficult. Uh, but again, you know, IVIS can help you to pinpoint uh, where you can target uh, short uh, length balloon angioplasty to, to get additional luminal gain there. Those are some of the big things uh, yeah. that I think really stand out. You know, um, a lot of the IVIS non-believers, let's call them that, um, say that, you know, you're seeing too much and you are now seeing something that maybe doesn't need treatment. Um, but, you know, it's it's kind of a, a big claim to say that, uh, but a lot of people do say that, you know, it's 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 all over social media when, when uh, an IVIS claim is made. Sure. So, um, I don't know. What, what do you think about that comment? How can you address it? I think that you combat the, the argument with data. I think it's in, important to acknowledge that we haven't gone through uh, and really systematically looked at the effectiveness of this modality. Uh, and that's really a shame, given it's been around for uh, 20 years <laughs> yeah, plus. Right. Um, you were due to start uh, uh, making, doing those investigations, really having a, a, a better understanding. Uh, I guess, you know, again, I made the argument earlier about NASA and some of the other areas of precision that we rely on every single day, um, Mm -hmm. you know, in what we do. And I I think this is no different. In the same token, you know, as far as understanding what we see and what difference it makes, let's collect that data. You know, does look at the success we've had with drug coated balloon angioplasty. Uh, even for long-grain calcified lesions. Now, of course, I have to say, and, and I think that no one can argue with it, a good bypass uh, when it's possible, when there's a good target, there's totally. nothing that, that can touch that. Yeah. However, uh, we've seen in the past, in my career, we've seen the, the ability to treat uh, certainly better than with plain old balloon angioplasty, but the drug coated balloon angioplasty kind of revolution, if you will, and the differences that made uh, as far as longevity uh, in treating these lesions. Imagine if we could understand, well, maybe if we can get an extra 15% that increases our uh, durability by six months to a year or even it's longer. Uh, just imagine, you know, again, the leap that we made from uh, plain old balloon angioplasty to DCB to whether or not to place scaffolding and again, be able to achieve those, uh, that, that long-term durability that we so, uh, so covet. 